So, the beta has come to a close. It shut down this morning, actually. But I still think there's time to discuss and get your thoughts on the tanks in Battlefield 1. Now, I want this video to be objective. I want to try and present some fair points here on the tanks, how they're used, how effective they are, and where I feel they need some tweaking. You're more than welcome to leave your own thoughts below. It'd be good to see if my opinion differs to all of yours. Now, firstly, the footage in the background today is of me in the light tank using the close support package, that's the default one, and I go 25 and 0 on this streak. Anyone that knows me and has been around on this channel for a while will know that I'm not much of a vehicle player, but the light tank is one of the few that I've really engaged with in Battlefield 1. I'm mainly an infantry player, I like that role, and I play it fairly well. I'm not the best player by any stretch of the imagination, but infantry is where I have most fun. But now, this light tank is something I can't wait to jump back into. It's something about rolling around on your own, just you in there, no one else to help you out, you're the spotter, the shooter, the driver, all rolled into one, and as I'm sure you've seen on countless other YouTube videos, you really can dominate in it. Right, now onto the issue of the tanks in the beta itself. My first point is going to be the map, Sinai Desert. In the alpha, we played on St. Quentin Scar, which was a much more well-rounded map more inclusive of all different types of combat. Each capture point was well fleshed out with buildings and alleyways for infantry, pathways for tanks, and a good clearance for sky vehicles. With areas like the town and the ruined church, the infantry could use the cover to flank a vehicle and perhaps do damage to a point where the tank can't see them. Sinai Desert doesn't offer that same style of combat, or rather it does, but just not all over the map it really does favour the vehicles. It's a large open map, long lines of sight, and beyond the town, very little infantry cover. This allows the ground vehicles, the light tank, the land ship, and the heavy tank to really work at full effectiveness. The light tank can cover good ground, switch between the main cannon and the canister shell, and it can just rip infantry to shreds. The landship, with its side cannons and machine guns, again is perfect for rolling through and bringing down infantry, and the heavy tank, with all of its side-mounted machine guns, makes it like a moving fortress. The map layout and style itself lends itself to vehicle combat, but the issue people are having is that the vehicles themselves, out in the open, are just too powerful against infantry. I'll agree the canister shell on the light tank, when lined up properly, can take down infantry at just silly ranges, and that definitely has to be changed. The vehicles are scary. As infantry, your first instinct is to run away from them. And to a certain extent, that's how I think vehicles should make you feel. But there is a line that needs to be met, and right now, ground vehicles are dominating the infantry on Sinai Desert. When you compare the two maps, St. Quentin Scar and Sinai Desert, the two that we've seen so far, I don't remember people complaining as much with St. Quentin Scar that the tanks were powerful. Yes, people did mention that tanking suddenly made you a huge threat to infantry, more so than it did in Battlefield 4, but I feel the maps that we've seen allow us to see the tank's power in different scenarios. Maybe the choice of beta map now becomes very much clearer. DICE needed to know whether the tanks needed balancing or tweaking, and clearly the reaction from players is that the tanks are very powerful. But is it just that the tanks are powerful though? Are they a cut above the rest or are we missing an ingredient to the pie here? We haven't spoken about the counters to the tank yet and perhaps that's where we should move to now. The explosive class, the assault class, comes default equipped with anti-tank grenades and that's a very good counter and then the dynamite and rocket gun can be unlocked later. Now it became very apparent at the start of the beta, many people noticed how powerful the tanks were. Was it simply that the effective counters were hidden away, waiting to be unlocked and used? 
Of course, it didn't help that the whole ranking system within the beta was completely broken, and most people had to use a workaround to unlock stuff, but it still showed that because of the wide open nature of the map and the long lines of sight, destroying tanks at first at the start of the beta was an extremely difficult thing to do. As an assault player, you needed to be within distance, within throwing distance actually, so that you could hit the anti-tank grenade onto the tank. And even closer with the dynamite actually, and this time because the dynamite doesn't stick to the tank, you need to stay very close to it or even preemptively know where the tank's gonna go so you can lay the dynamite down on the floor. Most of the time this means exposing yourself from behind cover, leaving safety and trying to go for that kill. That left a lot of infantry players dead on the ground because the tanks were just so damn good. What was needed was more of a long range counter, something like the rocket gun and unfortunately that was locked behind the ranking system which was of course bugged in the beta so not many people got access to it until the last 24 hours where DICE lifted all of the unlocks. This long range combat issue may only be specific to a few maps within Battlefield 1. Of course we know there will be 8, 9 or 10 maps when the game actually releases and not all of them are going to be a massive open desert where you needed something like the rocket gun to be able to combat the tanks effectively. Other maps will have different types of combat where close range gadgets may become much more viable and we've already seen that on St. Quentin Scar. If a tank went into the town in the centre of the map, anti-tank grenades would fly from everywhere. But it's very clear that the tanks do dominate in the larger open areas on battlefield maps. One thing I do like, however, with Battlefield 1's infantry and vehicle fights is the more simple, raw nature of them. Despite the fact the tanks are very powerful in open combat, Surely that's exactly where they're supposed to be powerful. Yes, an infantry team should still be able to do damage or even take it down, but most of the time, I'd expect the tank to win. Where I think people's frustration was coming from was either there weren't a few good ways to destroy or combat the tanks, with the gadgets needed being locked away, or the ways to combat the tanks were too weak. For example, the K-bullets on the Scout class on light tanks would do, at most, about 7 or 8 damage. You only get 5k bullets, that's a maximum damage of 35 to 40, which really isn't much when you think about it. The poor support class was reduced to only using light anti-tank grenades, not the big one, the small one, and going on a resupply mission to keep himself topped up, lobbing them over cover, and the medic only really had the high explosive grenade attachments for the rifles. What I'm trying to get at here is yes, I think the tanks were very powerful in the beta and I do think they need some tweaking, but I think the scenario in which the combat took place simply favoured the tanks overall. That and the infantry didn't have true counters to the tank's power. Now it'd be really great to get your opinion on this because I'm sure I've got a very different one to a lot of you guys out there and I've spoken for about eight and a half, nine minutes now and that's a lot of information for you guys to digest. So leave your thoughts down below, maybe along with a summary of the beta from your point of view. Having played it for all of the days that it was available, I'm pretty much ready now to just take on the full game and go for it. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. I value your guys' opinion, but you're leaving so many comments at the moment, I just simply can't reply to them all. I am down there reading them all of the time though, so don't worry, I am always seeing your opinions. And I try and feed off of them as well. I get video ideas from you guys, so uh, thanks very much. But yes, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the open beta for Battlefield 1, and you're as excited for the release as I am. I'll have plenty of videos going up between now and the launch and well beyond the launch into the future as well. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.